For the Press Corps, I'm Jeffrey Jennings, and I'm joined by Foxhole lead developer Mark for a one-on-one -on -one developer discussion with the questions compiled and combined from a thread on the r slash Foxhole game subreddit. We did our best to frame feature suggestions within points of discussion. Mark, thank you once again for taking the time off the clock to do this. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So full disclosure real quick, Siege Camp has officially sponsored the Press Corps by providing a one-time funding for our streaming computer that runs the 24-7 radio station on Twitch. More info on the Press Corps Foxhole Desk YouTube channel. All right, let's jump right headfirst into this. Logi influence slash player advocacy groups. How much influence did the Logi union have on this most recent update? Yeah, no, I think they, I think they definitely had an influence, um, and I think that uh, we took a look at feedback from them, um, just how we took feedback from other places. We got actually a lot of feedback over the holidays as well. Um, it, it's kind of this tough situation because when the dev team goes off for holidays, players tend to play games more, mm -hmm. right? So sort of like the amount group. of. Yeah, so it's kind of like the amount of feedback increases and the amount of people that are sort of able to um, start taking action or plan to take action is 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 vastly reduced, um, if even existed at all, because, you know, dev team always, our, our, our studio closes. I think this is, like, most game companies close, close their studio over the holidays. Um, so it's the same as us. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I think they definitely, um, I think they definitely contributed to uh the feedback and i i think the outcomes were positive right so yeah i mean i was actually surprised by uh their reaction to um the latest dev stream i thought it'd be uh you know at best lukewarm but it was almost ecstatic in some spaces and they even uh according to what i've seen they voted to de-escalate uh, the the strike or take it down notch. Hey, do you have a, do you have any reaction to all the articles that were written, like the NME article or the um, all the other like mainstream gaming press articles you've seen? Well, I mean, there's not much like we can do, right? So in terms of how we react, reacting to that um, specifically, right? Obviously, we're not oblivious to things that are going on. Um, I think that yeah, you probably couldn't hear. Talk about this a lot, but I think you know now the game has grown. Um, it's it is you know we found that it's effective. We get a lot of feedback like that when there's a lot of players that are um, you know saying you know this part of the game needs work. We just really um, have adopted the approach of okay, maybe it's time to listen, right? I think it's it's too often that. You know, in the online world, people just want to tell people what, you know, uh, maybe what they want to hear, right? Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe some like platitudes or, or maybe they want to say, hey, don't worry, like, you, you know, everything's going to be all right and things like that. But I think, you know, I'm really, I feel like listening um, and putting your head down, trying to get to work um, based on the things that you're hearing. Ultimately, I think is where the energy should be spent, um, especially when you're dealing with a game like Foxhole at this point in development. Mm -hmm. it, it's a bit different when you know if you're sort of at the beginning with the pre-alpha, where you just had like a handful of people in a room, basically, um, which is what the community was. It's a bit different because you're able to sort of um, communicate in a different way. But when it's when the audience is much bigger, you know, I, I think it's just it's about where you spend your energy, and I think mm -hmm. that. We've always, you know, like we did this time. We didn't have a lot of time, by the way. Like, I think the one thing that is, um, I don't expect anyone to understand this. It's not the job of players to understand this, but I guess just uh -huh. to provide more context, right? Um, it's like when we go back from the holidays, it's it's like, okay, the full team wasn't even back right away. People like mm -hmm. to take extra vacation because it's the only time because things get did. really busy. Use exactly. that PTO. Because everybody knows that things get busy as the year as as the year goes in, so people tend to take more holidays because they're like, okay, I want to rest up, and then right. and then the year's going to start and it's going to get crazy, right? So I think one important context that um, I wish people would know, but again, I don't expect anyone to know. It's not their job, right? Like mm -hmm. players' jobs are to play the game. They give us feedback, 
and they either like the game or they don't. And it's our job to make it better. So I'm not like saying this because I'm thinking anyone should be understanding to this, but it's just more of from I mean, that's what from my perspective. Yeah. What happens is you come back, <laughs> full team's not even there until like, you know, mid January, right? And you look at this feedback, we're like, okay, we were supposed to do all this stuff. This is what we had planned mid mid December when people started, when things start to wind down, right? Because that's the other that's the other side of it. At the end of the year, it's not like okay, it's not like people go on holidays mid December, but things start to wind down, right? Like it, it's a it's been a last year was a crazy year. And things start to wind down. People start to need to see their families. Right. We're not going to be like, hey, everybody, let's like pull some long hours to suddenly ramp up again. No, it starts to wind down. And then it winds back up in January. And we had this plan. We had this plan of like, hey, okay, which we spelled out in our blog. We were like, hey, we're going to work on a few Logi things. We're going to work on an infantry update. We came back. And then we we're like, okay, there's a lot of feedback. Maybe we should make some adjustments. But we're planning to, sh- to get this ready by mid-February. So you have a month there, really, right? And you're like, what are you going to do? And you don't know how much you can get done, right? Because a month turnaround time for an update is pretty insane, right? I mean, to be fair, we did have some work already done before the holidays for some of the stuff that shipped in this update. So I'm not saying that we started in January. We actually started like back in December and and some of it maybe even a bit earlier. But um, I think it's like, come back, you're like, okay, we got to make some adjustments, right? Obviously, you know, there's been some feedback about Logi, but there was also a lot of feedback. I think the thing we have to understand is over the holidays, we got a lot of feedback about some of the other stuff. Like some people felt like the bunker reservations were very frustrating. People were frustrated by like a whole bunch of other stuff too. So we took not only the Logi feedback, but the other feedback and we're like, okay, we know we have another big update ahead of this one that we also have to start working on because at the same time, we don't want to stop the show all the time because if we do that, we'll never get to the bigger updates and the stuff you see there. So on one hand, we're like, hey, we got to keep pushing behind the scenes on the big update. We got to finish this update and we somehow got to incorporate all this feedback, both from Logi and, you know, all these other places. And you got to do it all in, in a month, <laughs> right? Big time, um, just a little So bit. it's like, so we're like, what? It's we don't know exactly what might make it in. Is it wise to spend your energy on, going out there and saying, hey, don't worry, we're going to do this and we're going to do that, we're going to do this and do that. We're like, no, let's let's take out the thing, take all the feedback, put in a list, let's get in a room, let's figure out what we can do, and we're not going to be able to, it's not, you know, again, it's not up to us. Like, we don't know if this is going to be, you know, make certain groups or people happy, right? All we can do is look at the feedback, put our heads down, work on it, which is what we did. And once we knew, which is around the time of the dev stream, okay, we're 95% sure that these features are going to make it in. Not 100% sure. Things happened at the last minute. We're 95% sure we should talk about it now. I don't want to talk about it when it's 60% done or less or even 80% done because things happen at the last minute and you start talking and then you ship the thing and it's like, what happened to all those things that you promised us, right? And most people are understanding. That's the thing. I think most people will understand. But we, our fault in the past is maybe we, like, we've definitely shown things too early, right? And, and we've talked about things too early. And, you know, some may have gotten treated unfairly because of that. Because they might, you know, think, wow, you guys said all this stuff. You didn't do it. And then... We don't have anyone to blame but ourselves, right? Like, you understand what I mean? Fair, like it, yeah, yeah, to be fair to you, I think uh, it's astounding. I've never seen a developer personally, uh, you know, talk all the time in, or like a developer team talk all the time in a, an official Discord, just casually, memeing with everyone, doing this or that with everyone, not just the community manager, uh, but like <laughs> a good third of the team. And uh, but over the downside of that is that unless there is someone religiously documenting every what uh, you always say, um, you always get taken out of context. You always say, "Well, that would be interesting." Okay, well, that's what that means. That means that feature is absolutely coming within the next six years or six months uh, or or uh, something. Yes, has to come together. So you, know, you can't 
Yeah, sorry. Well, you're going off sorry, of that, go you know, feedback yeah. and stuff, um, do you yeah, think yeah. Advo advocacy groups like the Logic Union are useful for more focused feedback, collective feedback on top of the existing avenues? Would you like to see more? I mean, maybe not so much with the union LARP or whatever, but just more like, hey, this is a group that's gotten together, they put their heads together and be like, hey, we're really focused on like how squads and regiments function, like the tools for that. Or we're really focused on bunker building. We're, we're the bunker building buddies. I, I don't know. Uh, but something like that. Would you, would, would, would that be something the developers would be helpful, uh, find helpful in getting feedback? I think I'm neutral on that, if I have to be honest. And I think over the years, I, I've kind of learned these things are largely out of our control. And mm -hmm. I guess it's hard to predict what what um, would have a positive outcome and yes. what wouldn't. Um, obviously, in some cases, there's negative outcomes, right? I'm not going to lie. Um, I think sometimes there's positive out there's there are are positive outcomes, right? And and I think, um, you know, so I I this one I think I have to say I'm kind of neutral. I I, I think I'm just sure. Like it, you know, if it happens, it happens, and we get the feedback. We're going to listen. Um, if if there's you know, but it kind of, maybe this isn't a good answer, but I guess my feeling is just sort of, it is what it is, not bad or good. It It is. And like, I don't even know, because we get, okay, like, we get, we might get feedback from um, a bunch of clients, right? Or we might get feedback from some passionate user that wrote a really long thread on Reddit. And then we might get, you know, feedback mm -hmm. from an advocacy group, as you say. So um, it's, it's another form. It's it's just another way to do it. Uh, it's just another way to do it. And I don't know. I, you know what? I would have to think about that one. I I feel kind of... It's a case-by-case case basis. Good. Right. Yeah. Because there yeah. are, yeah. personally speaking, there are a lot of ways this Lodge, the Lodge Union could have completely bungled uh, the whole situation, in my opinion, uh, very, mm -hmm. un, very unproductive ways. But... Uh, in, uh, speaking for myself, I think it was actually quite productive, and I think everyone's kind of actually much more pleasantly surprised that uh, this uh, ended the, the, the or, you know, fully ended that the way it did, uh, but rather, you know, coming down to a uh, not so big of a <laughs> big of a struck. I, I just, I'm just really, I've actually told people in real life, like, yeah, hey, so there's like a strike going on in the game, like, Oh, like, is your, like, local... No, 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 This is in an MMO. They're literally striking. Could you have ever imagined, Mark, that, that being... No, actually, thing? something something that is that was interesting, um, mm -hmm. but this is more just kind of at the personal level, yeah. nothing to do with Siege Camp, was, um, sure. uh, you know, I've had, I had friends message me about... Um, personal friends yeah. message me about Foxhole that didn't... that we don't really talk about games that much. And they're like, is everything okay with your game? Because <laughs> they were seeing these things. They're like, what is a strike? And they didn't even understand, right? Because these are people, you know, they're not really, uh, like, maybe they play games, but they're, you know, they're sort of not right. part of this, like, sphere, right? But when it hits um, Kotaku and, it was, and you just see Foxhole strike, like, what the hell is exactly. going on? So it was kind of, it was kind of interesting from, from that standpoint, right? Yeah. Personally, I do hope that uh, if you were involved in the logistics union strike, maybe take some of those lessons in real life. That's me speaking person, personally, not Mark Foot, but that's, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so to set community expectations, will there be any logistics-focused updates in the next four to six months? Doesn't have to be a hard yes or no, maybe like a... Uh? <laughs> oh, man, this goes back to the thing of like, okay. I can't. Okay, I can't promise fine. things we'll because on. of the we'll reasons that I talked about, right? Um, but when we come back around to it, let me just say maybe I'll say this. Well, you know, one of the vague answers that I'm sure you're gonna, I'm sure you're gonna loathe, and you're gonna be rolling your eyes at this, right? Um, but we tend to work in things in rounds, right? And I think sure. like Logi is due for a round, um, and I think you know Max mentioned this in 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 the Q and A thread. Um, I think people were asking a similar question, and, and he said, like, you know, logistics is like the found is like one of the foundations of the game, and it's one of the most important things to us because, like, to us, it's it's what it's one of the big things that makes Fox so special, right? Like, I, you know, I'm sure some other games do do logistics to some degree, but mm -hmm. 
I haven't seen personally a game that has done it to the degree that Foxhole has. And I think we would only want um, to make the special part of, well, what we think is a special part of Foxhole as special as it can be, right? So, um, yeah. All right. I, I asked everyone. I got, I got like 10 responses and a whole bunch of DMs. And I was like, what, what do you expect him to say? Anyway, coming up next here, I guess, is actually kind of a quick one, I think, is technical limitations. Are there any design slash feature decisions you can name that both you and the player base want, but just have technical limitations? An example being towing. Um, that one is such a such a quick one to get shut down in the in the subreddit understandably so because it's like well hey towing would be really cool someone new asks but uh then someone quickly answers uh, oh yeah they, that would be cool but it's a technical limitation the devs have said and then the thread just ends right there and everyone knows exactly where the where the conversation is on that is there anything you can name that maybe there's some like misconception on yeah no we want to do this but uh it's just a matter of the technical limitations or just working on it um yeah, this is specific to Logi, I guess. All um, this is specific to Logi, right? A, a lot of it was specific to Logi. A lot of uh, specific right. things like uh, re yeah, regiment refinery queues or stuff like that. But it, um, it could be any feature. Okay, yes, yeah, there's a few things. Uh, no, the regiment. I, I I guess maybe there's a couple there that I'll just pick at the regiment okay. refinery queue. That that's not a technical limitation. Um, I think that we are careful to not couple communication tools we want certain communication tools for for a certain purpose and we don't necessarily want every communication tool to be used for every kind of reservation in the game right because a new player comes in we want them to know okay this is for that and this is for that and if everything is for everything right then it becomes confusing and it also brings in like it's more of a design decision um and and if there you know if there's some sort of i know that was you know a, a, a feedback and i think if there was some desire for that we'd want to try to support that in some other way like in improving the multiple squads to allow them to get at that similar thing right like for example if with multiple squads there are some bugs with it right now by the way so uh, you know i want to put that out sure. there but we're gonna focus on making it better hopefully in the next while uh, but that's an example, right? Like maybe with multiple squads now, there's not as much of a need to have a regiment level thing, right? Um, so that one's not a technical limitation. Um, I wouldn't say the door is completely closed on that either. Uh, the towing has been a technical limitation, and it's a very difficult problem to solve. Um, with I'm trying to think with logistics, what else there might be. Um, I think that I think outside of the, logistics definitely the border bases like mm. the fact that there's a border is the number one thing that's very hard to explain like the borders and the queues because there's a lot of design decisions that have to be made to accommodate that to overall provide an average smooth experience right and something like the border bases is one of the hardest things to explain because everyone just thinks the border bases suck just get rid of them right <laughs> and then i'll have to write like an essay on like okay well read this context here like in the beginning of time we tried to make the game just work without border bases mm -hmm. and then we went through xyz solutions and finally we arrived at the border bases not ideal but the lesser of the evils that we've tried in the past right that's definitely one of those um but i don't for logistics i can't think of I can't, off the top of my head, if you have examples, you know, I can talk about it, but I can't think of anything at the top of my head right now about that. No, actually, I was thinking also the cues as well, but that's like the, that's like the biggest uh, problem of all. If you can ever solve cramming uh, as many people as you can into a region, a thousand people into a region, that's like, then you're, you got the golden goose right there. Um, so that yeah. would be the big one. But I think uh, people were, a lot of people were just asking, um, hey, is there like anything where you can just get clarification on that way we can just say, oh, it's like towing. Yeah, they want it. They can't do it. Oh, oh you know what? I got one right now. Um, is uh, cross-faction chat. Uh, so Vivox, right? So Vivox, for those who don't yes. know, is the third-party yeah. service that a lot of games use, including Foxhole, uh, that yeah. provides a VoIP or a voice over IP or um, – yeah. Uh, it allows you to uh, use voice to talk to each other. Uh, it's been limited. Yep. 
uh, in the uh, cross faction has been eliminated simply as a technical decision because of uh, you know it, it, it's a bigger strain. So we're not going to be seeing that comeback anytime soon. Is that safe to say? Yeah, um, it was fine up until our our region uh, could support more than two hundred, and mm -hmm. then we start running the problem because the box okay. only supports two hundred. There, there are ways you can, you can try to, like, solve that technically. Um, a very difficult way is to form some sort of, you know, tackle at the spatial level, saying, okay, people within a region, like in an area, can can hear. But then you have other problems, like, okay, what happens if everyone goes to that one area? <laughs> like, for example, if you slice up the map, right, and you mm -hmm. say, like, slice it up into like, into like ten different pieces, and each one has a, you know, is on a different a different channel, right? It, right? But the whole point is that you want as many people in a single location as possible. Like that's the beauty of the game, is that yeah, and you just have to support it, right? Mm -hmm. Like if everybody decides to do it, right? Um, How can you do your big that... Russian Ura charge <laughs> with a billion people if they if you know yeah, if they can't yeah. shut Ura? It's not an unsolvable problem though. Like I don't with enough engineering time, you know, you could. You could just not use Vivox. You could switch away to a platform that does support more. Um, you could try to even, you know, roll your own tech to support that. There are there are avenues, but it's like you got to pick where you got you know you got to pick which battles you're going to fight and where knowing, your dev time is spent. Right. Right. Knowing Foxhole is you very unique to the point where I can't even think of anything that comes close. Maybe Planet Side, uh, mm. but. Um, yeah, so in terms of yeah, cramming as like the goal is to cram as many people into a single instance as possible because that's what a persistent world is. Is Siege Camp's best option just to develop its own first party VoIP system? That way you can even uh, uh, completely uh, customize it to what you want out of the squad, regiment, platoon, whatever system that you want. Yeah, I mean, that is that is an option. Um, you know, that's kind of what we're doing. We're working on like new server tech for future projects. That's what we're doing on the player count side, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's possible to do that on the voice side. Uh, we don't have too much expertise with like um, voice technology, so like you know, we'd have to figure out how to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I would, I, I'm with the players on this one in terms of. This is definitely like I wish we could because there is no right. reason. Cross faction voice chat was really cool, you know. Like I, I think it's it was kind of it's not just sure you get you know like, when it gets overly toxic maybe that's bad but but like I think overall, um, you know you you got all these great experiences like the like the role playing that mm. could happen. Um, I think was really cool and sometimes you get these really friendly moments between the factions that are kind of neat as well, right? You just, I don't know. I think it opens up a lot of, right. you know, unique scenarios. A lot of cool moments. Right? Like that's that, the a sandbox. Cool moments, you, yeah. 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 Um, exactly. So moving on, uh, pivoting back to logistics then, we're going to move on here to midline logistics. There's been a lot of discontent regarding the expanded map and how it strains logistics by lengthening the supply lines. Is mm -hmm. this intended design? Um... It's not intended for the long run, right? For the long I run, think, okay. I think we needed, we couldn't do everything that we want to do. Um, so we tried to, uh, you know, obviously in the future we want to provide more ways to do Logi, more ways to do transport. Um, and we couldn't do it all at once, which is kind of unfortunate. And we said, okay, to alleviate that, right? Because we, we thought about this exact problem. It's not like, you know, we were like, yeah, let's just make it big and not care about anyone, <laughs> right? Like, like, like we we purposely in update forty six, we actually increased the shipping container um, capacity by fifty percent. I don't know uh, if if uh, did you I, say forty six sure or eighty six? Uh, we increased. Oh, by I'm sorry, update forty six. Okay. Update forty six. Right. We we brought the shipping containers from forty slots to sixty slots. Mm -hmm. So that's like the biggest jump that that's ever happened, right? Um, because for this very reason, we were like, okay, we, you know, this is not gonna, you know, obviously this is not gonna, 
this might not make up for that, but it's something that might help in the meantime. So that's a pretty big amount. Just to put that in perspective, we've never even, like in the past, any slot increase would be like, you know, minuscule on a truck or something, right? So we right. added like 20 slots to shipping containers. And, um, and we've also, you know, in, in many wars since then, we have also included a, um, an extra, like a large region that is a bit closer. So it's not just all the way at the back. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like, we obviously, you know, I'm not saying it's not even what I'm saying. It's not for me to say whether or not it works, right. It's up for Mm -hmm. the players to say, and obviously a lot of players felt like that wasn't enough, but I'm just saying that that's what was on our mind. Right. We, we increased the shipping bandwidth um, over long hauls by 50%. Um, we try to add in some larger regions in the meantime, right? Um, so that might not stay there forever in the future once, you know, we had an opportunity to address some of these other issues. Um, and and then, yeah, and then now in this this update, um, you know, we, we, we obviously, there was still quite some pain, so we tried to do a few more things. Um, but... I don't, I don't think that's, I think it's a valid criticism and a valid concern um, that the space, the amount of space in the world um, increased and the things we did, um, you know, I don't think it completely makes up for that. And, and, um, you know, I, I think, I'm actually, I don't think it's, Go ahead. so I guess one thing, you know, I guess one thing that might help is, um, I do think there's too much driving in the game, right? Okay. I do think there's too much driving. And I, and then I also think that too much driving and so like the amount of driving plus, plus I guess the amount of, enge- you know, multiply by the amount of, enge- or maybe not multiply, but when considering how much engagement you get from that, mm-hmm. um, it's not ideal. It's not, it's not great. Um, and, and. I'd like to. I'd like to make. I'd like to make that better. And I think there's other. You know what? I'll let you speak. So maybe I'll save some of my stuff. I, I'm actually going to that. revisit that exact point uh, in a, yeah. in the next question. But Perfect. I'll, Perfect. In, Perfect. In, in terms of yeah. this, I'm actually surprised because I always interpreted the like in update 87. There was a big hoopla about. Um, there's literally no factories in the midline. It's literal. It's like we're back to port bases now, right? Where it's all the logistics is in the north and in the south and nothing in between. Personally, I thought that, m- minus the, the part about um, being uh, hell in terms of the moment-to-moment gameplay, strategically, I thought that was awesome. I thought that was like, oh, okay, so it's actually more like a real war where, um, you, know, yes. you know, they weren't literally doing production in the middle of the Normandy beaches. No, that stuff happens all the way back at home. Exactly. And this and that. Exactly. So I thought it was yeah. a balancing thing where it's like, oh, okay, so when one side gets all the way up to the other uh, other faction's side, the defenders get like a, an indirect buff where it's like, okay, well, okay. we're on so, the back end, but so, we, we have, our supply lines are right here. Yeah, so I'm really eager to talk about that because mm-hmm. I am 100% with you on both of those points and that okay. is what our goal was, right? So first of all, like it is definitely intended that majority of your, list of your logistics comes from the back for the reasons that you said because that's mm-hmm. what, you know, a real supply line that represents what a real supply line would look like. Right. And we think that's cool. Right. Um, that doesn't mean though that I feel like the way that the gameplay is, um, is ideal. Right. So don't okay. mistake those two things. Like, like I, I like that cool conceptually and I want that to be the way it is, um, uh, in the game, but that does not mean that like, the way it's implemented right now and is, is the way it should be. Right. Um, because you can't just, and then to your second point, it is used as a balancing lever as well. Right. And, okay, and, it, so and it's not only used as, to a degree. Exactly. And it's not only that it's used as a balance, um, um, lever, but it is a realistic thing too, on top of the balance, like the more stretched your supply line is, I think we all agree that that is like, you know, uh, what a real problem would have been. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, or would be, and and so I think for those two points, for sure, um, 
that's what we want conceptually. But again, repeating a million times that, that, that like that that's not necessarily make for fun gameplay, right? right? So, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm so ready to jump into that. Uh, but I will yeah. say, last thing is that I actually think that the I you know how it happens in practice is that the defender's advantage and the attacker's strain supply lines is actually negated by the cues. So it's like, all right, well, I spent an extra half hour than the other guy, than the enemy driving my stuff, but it's all for mm-hmm. nothing because both up, me and the enemy are just waiting at the region border, just sitting mm-hmm. here waiting for the next mm-hmm. hour. So it's like, well, that balancing act never happened because we have uh, border cues. Now, of course, mm-hmm. there's the big answer is you just cram as many people technologically into a region, but are there other ways around it? So like, Going back to transfer bases maybe as a solution or maybe a shipping freighter queue bypass because I know if you'd make an exception for trucks, people are going to exploit that. But maybe shipping freighters, that could be like a – you get a bypass yeah, we, there. Yeah, we thought about we thought about this a lot. You sure. know, ideas like, oh, maybe you should check how many supplies you have in your truck, right? And then, well, someone's just going to leave – a faction is just going to leave a truck there full of things okay. as the transport. <laughs> that's the They're Q truck, right? It. They're going to game it to the absolute. Exactly. It's like, um, here's the Q freighter. Here's the Q freighter. It's always going to be at the border. You transfer over, you know, and then <laughs> you're good, right? So it, it, it's very like, man, that border problem, it, it, it just propagates into so many other things, right? I think, so. I think transfer bases might be the, I would go like, let's go at it right now. Transfer bases. What's the problem with transfer bases? Uh, with someone on the other end waiting to receive those supplies, none. None. Um, okay. I, I think it. I think it's just like development time, and and okay. like, um, you know, maybe that's just another okay. thing on the list. I mean, I mean, I won't say there's none because when you sit down to implement it, there's right. always going to be something. There's always going to be like, well, someone's going to grieve this or exploit that or X Y Z, right? So mm-hmm. I won't say none, but I. But you want to see it? I. Think maybe that it's worth trying. Okay. Right. Um, I think it's worth trying, and I think we've talked about it. Um, I don't think there's like any near-term plans because you know development schedule is full. But there's there's no technological resistance. There's no okay design resistance or goals resistance. It's just Sound simply design. you know sure. a thing that we haven't tried yet. Right. All That's right. it. Yeah. All right. We'll move on here then. I was surprised by those answers. Uh, so next here is the big one. It's unfun slash monotonous gameplay. Foxhole has been described as two games in one. To oversimplify, you have the parts where you shoot and the parts where you make the things to shoot, also known as logistics. The most mm. menial of tasks in the logistics loop have been described as unfun, monotonous, dull, strenuous on the eyes and fingers, and a grind. But they are tolerated simply because it's necessary. These tasks include holding left click on a, in a harvester for five minutes, holding W to drive for a half hour while the map and region queues break any sense of flow, moving shipping containers back and forth, etc. Simply put, is there no alternative? Um. Well, I don't think that I'm on board with some sort of with that as a blanket statement across sure. like all logistics gameplay and. Mm-hmm. I think that it's, um, I would say that the fun comes from, for, you know, there's, and there's also like so many different types of logistics players. There's logistics players that prepare for their clients so they can do an operation, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it, it's means to the end. There's logistics players that do logistics for logistics, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's insane logistics players on the far end, like a Kronos winner that basically, <laughs> like, does things with logistics is just, insane it's a big spectrum so i don't want to say sure. like blanket right. like it's just grindy and not fun right um um because obviously like you know it was a lot there but to hone well, in on yes the specific um low i would say the low level gameplay right of scrapping um i think that to a, gr- a degree there, there there's merit to the complaint Right. Um, I think it is. Mono- I think it's overly monotonous. Yes, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. And I agree with that. Holding down W to drive across many, many regions is also overly monotonous. So I agree with those two low-level things. 
right? Okay. So then are there thoughts on, on how to combat that? Like, for instance, scaling. As the war goes on, so for instance, mm -hmm. in combat, right, at the very start of the war, uh, you just have, like, rifles and grenades. That's it. And then it scales up to all the way to rocket super weapons, uh, ba uh, battle tanks, to, or maybe not battle tanks, but you know what I mean, tanks and, and our, uh, combined arms, artillery, et cetera, naval landings. But we don't get that, we don't seem to get that as, as much with logistics. Yes, we do get the, um, the, uh, the, oh my goodness, the harvester. We get things like uh, shipping freighters and, 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 um, and other, other things like that. But it just doesn't seem to scale enough. So has there been any thought given to, say, automation for depth and complexity? Uh, not total automation, but something to bring it along, or maybe th uh, things like upgrading infrastructure as the war progresses. So maybe like roads, like a hierarchy of roads. Any thought into that? I think there's. I think there. So you named all the the other things in the other parts of the game. I, I yeah, I think there's room for that on the logistics side, right? Um, and I would like to. Saying what I'm liking to, I'm not promising any features here. Of course, just let everyone know. <laughs> a, a lot of people. Okay, so a lot of people, when asking the questions, they were essentially just asking you to confirm if their idea was uh, was going to happen or not. I'm like, well, that's they're they're only going to say it when it's when it's ready. So I'm I'm yes. trying to frame it yeah. in a discussion. So yeah, um, absolutely. Um, you know, I I, I want to reduce the amount of you know monotonous activities like. Okay. holding on w you know i and i'd like to you know i'd like to add ways to do that like expand out so to say you're basically saying like expanding out the logic game having more progression there right is that pretty much what you're getting at to no. sort of make increase the power of logic as mm -hmm. as the war goes on right, right. much yeah, like how you can that... have the increase in firepower as you go on it's like oh well one single yeah. soldier can set up a tripod and they have this massive gun that can really do a lot of damage meanwhile you know, hammer goes scrap. I mean, you, yes, you do get the, the, the sledgehammer and the harvester, but uh, even then it feels like it plateaus uh, seemingly too early. Um, I, you know, yeah, I people think, will disagree with me on that, but that's... No, I think that's wouldn't. in... I think the game is lacking that, mm -hmm. right? Incentivizing return trips as well. Is that something that... Uh, you'd be interested, or like, uh, how, how do we go about doing that? Incentivizing uh, the return trip, because uh, there's been a, a phenomenon of people uh, doing the long, long drive, and then they get there, and then they either just screw it, I'm just going to pick up a gun and start shooting, which is valid. Uh, it's not necessarily a problem. Or, but for some other people, they will just log out, go back into the home region. It's like, well, it's just easier to go get, to make a new truck going, you know, three regions back than doing a return trip. Any thought on the, how to incentivize that? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've thought about a lot of ways to do it, um, and I would I would love to work on that part. I mean, I've heard a lot of ideas, like, you know, actually a recent idea that was kind of interesting was um, uh, that you you bring letters back home, right? I saw that <laughs> and post, that too. Gives, <laughs> and that gives you some kind of a buff, which I thought was... Um, kind of an interesting suggestion. It was seemingly abstract, um, but I like the freshness of it. Yeah, it was. You know, I think the thing, I think the thing we've struggled with that one is how to do something that doesn't seem overly contrived, mm -hmm. right? Um, which we've done. We put things in the game before that have seemed overly, overly contrived. Like I think there was one really small iteration two years ago of. Uh, um, I think it was. Was it like the research? There was some sort of research mechanic that involved bringing back a bunch of different ingredients, um, and we, mm -hmm. you know, we tried that for one update, and it, it was a terrible idea in the end, and it was it was a failure, I would say. And then we pulled that from the game. Uh, you probably don't remember that. It was just for like one update. Oh um, yeah. So you know, that was us trying to get at that, trying to get at this bringing stuff back. Um, problem so we haven't solved that yet i would like to try more things there um but that's really where we're always stuck it's like how do we do something that doesn't feel contrived we've thought of things like okay maybe you can drag back you know a if you bring a flatbed you can drag back a tank husk or something and then you get some huge benefit from that 
Mm -hmm. um, maybe some some idea of like here's some here's some like salvage or something um, that you can bring back and that's valuable. But it always becomes this difficult design problem of like, hey, first, how do you make it not contrived, as I said, right. and then secondly, how do you make it so that it doesn't become it's hard because if that becomes valuable, if that's not valuable enough, no one's going to do it. If it becomes too valuable, then it turns into this weird thing where people will go purposely to bring it back mm. as a better way to do logistics than just staying at the back. You understand what I mean? It's almost like, right. how do you min max? It's how min do you max, bounce right? that? It, yeah, exactly. It's, 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 it's almost like, Either one or two, it'll either have to fall on one or two sides. It's either not worth it or it's worth it. And then if it's worth it, though, it'll undermine other things, right? So that's sort of where we've always been stuck. So there. so then going off that, are there any like psychological tricks that – because so my favorite example I always like to go to is World of Warcraft. Not that I've played it, uh, but I know people who've played a lot of it. But one they always told me was that, yeah, so to disincentivize players from spending – uh, 23 hours in a day uh, playing WoW, um, they'll have this diminishing XP system where, okay, at the start of your play session, the first hour yeah, you or get, two... you like, rest XP, right? Exactly. And then but yeah. when you start entering, like, six hours or something, suddenly you're not earning as much. So it's, like, it's, it's, it's the same thing as penalizing you, but instead it's, like, doing it from the other direction. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so, so psychological tricks, same, same ending, but, you know, just approaching it from a different angle. So maybe reward, maybe diminished, uh, you know, once you, uh, uh, you know, start scrapping for eight hours, you diminish, uh, the amount of mm. commends you get. I don't know. Something like that. Um, a revamped ranking right. system. Uh, no, yeah. no. I mean, that's an interesting thought. It's sort of like, you know, if there was some mer like value to the return trip, right. This is just like a really simplified example. There was some value to, to the return trip, but there was a diminishing return. Mm -hmm. So you would, you know, it's almost like it would be effective to do it once, but it wouldn't undermine other normal ways of doing things, if you know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. Like something like that. So yeah, it's an interesting, it's an interesting idea. Yeah. And um, uh, I guess kind of uh, tail end of this, um, have you played any like other kind of logistics esque games or like you know? So uh, I'll just say it: uh, games like Euro Truck Simulator, Satisfactory, Factorio, Stardew Valley, Deep Rock Galactic, stuff like that. Where it's a uh, you know, there's while well, there's other things in that game that may not be so foxhole. There's some surprising thoroughfreds. Like, what are those games um, hitting so 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 well? But then maybe the foxhole population logistics population just can't quite seem to capture the same magic even though they are different games at the, at the end of the day like there yeah. should be seemingly more and more like we'll, we'll say uh driving right why is driving so monotonous in foxhole whereas people will spend their whole life up you know in a truck simulator and that's like the greatest thing in the world for them um it, it yeah no it's a, yeah. yeah i guess um to uh, well, again, like avoiding blanket, like all logistics right. players think of course. this way, right? But um, I, I feel like, I guess to answer your first question, I, I, I'm a huge fan of a, a, a game called Snow Runner. Snow I, Runner. I don't know if you played that game. I it's don't like, think so. It, it's a trucking simulator game, but um, it's it's amazing. It, mm -hmm. it it's. It's essentially like your truck simulator, but I think it's I think it's more engaging because oh, you're um, fighting you're fighting the elements with it too. You get stuck in mud and snow and things like that. Um, but so, like that game tra traversing is fun because it's like a puzzle, right? That's the mm. whole game. The whole game is like I have to get from point A to B. Do I take the easy route or the hard route? If I take the easy route it takes longer and it's actually pretty boring. <laughs> you know, you're sort of just like driving, hold, right. hold, hold, holding on like W essentially. But they provide you with these other avenues of, um, of uh, okay, you could take this more treacherous route and it's a shortcut and you tend to, you know, it's like a risk reward thing, right? So you're like, okay, mm -hmm. maybe I'll take the risky route. And then, you know, it, it's sort of like if you fail, you actually end up spending more time trying to get your truck out of the mud. 
right. than you would have if you just took the safe route. So, but if you, on the other hand, if you figure out how to get through the mud, you saved yourself time and then you feel amazing about it. So there's this like risk reward kind of element to it. And this, it's, it's almost like a puzzle, right? Yeah. Um, but it's like, you know, we thought about stuff like that, you know, we thought about stuff like, um, you know, okay, what if there were shortcuts, right? This is an example. Like, this is an exact example taken from that game. What if there's a shortcut? You could take the shortcut, but there's a chance that, you know, your truck could get stuck in mud. But if you just took the normal route that's in the live game now, right, um, it would be longer, but you wouldn't have this problem. But we actually give you an option to take the more treacherous route. And there's a lot of, like, long discussions about that. It's like, okay, well, you know, does does the game's physics have the fidelity to make that fun, to make being stuck in mud fun? Probably not, right? Because that requires a, a lot of physics fidelity there. Um, if, if, if that physics fidelity is not there and that puzzle solving element is not there, because in SnowRunner, you, you, know, you have to use a winch. There's all these other things you can use that makes it fun. If you don't have all that stuff there, even though you're providing this risk reward, is it just going to be seen as, you know, they gave me this road, but now the game or the devs just made it harder because they just made me stuck in mud. Or are they going to see, hey, the game gave me this other route. This is great. It's up to me to use my skill to get around it. Or are they just going to say, think like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, this is just worse than before because now it's just, they just added mud to the game. People are right? going to take it as, <laughs> so- a, as a nerf. To driving as a nerve even though technically it would be a shortcut with with a fun element to it because we're always trying to you know look for ways to make it more fun so that's the kind of conversations that we've had around that um i love stardew valley right mm-hmm. you know I, I won't get too far into it but yeah I, I do think there are i do think um you know it's it's fossils logistics kind of takes some elements from okay it it's like there's there there there's the simulation side right like you're actually driving this truck there's challenges like we had this survey a long time ago about okay what is fun about logistic and and this is very long ago and to be clear it was only from you know up you know players from back then which might not be reflective of how players feel right now right but a part of that in in that survey that we took on reddit um players said hey it's like a really fun part is when i'm approaching a town right and that town is at the front there's a rush especially if i know that there are partisans around right Mm. or players trying to block the roads they're like it's a rush because when i make it i get i feel really excited right if i don't make it i don't right and i think like you know that that part you know um at least for some set some subset of players is fun holding on w across two regions two, three regions, it's probably not as fun, right? Especially um, when so you're relatively even, safe. Exactly. Especially when you're relatively safe. There's no challenge. You know, there's no alternate routes. To, there's not like you can say, hey, maybe I could do something more risky and it'll get me there sooner. Um, and, you know, so there isn't that. So I I don't, you know, I'm just, I don't really have a point here. I'm just kind of talking. But right, right. I do feel that, I do feel like, I do agree with, you know, the, the, like with the intent behind that question that you asked, right? Like we asked the same question too. Right. And, mm-hmm. and like, like I said, with that example of the mud, that's, that's kind of the, the, the thing that we think about. And then we think about all these other things too. Like, um, like the thing you said earlier about, okay, maybe, you know, like things can be, can be, maybe players can build infrastructure or tools that make it better. So even though it's harder at the beginning, you can like, mm-hmm you know, not just grind the same grind. You can, what, what I think players are trying to get at there, or I think what that's, what, what they're trying to get at there is like, you know, not just flat grind. I like to call it the flat grind, right? Mm. Like, but perhaps grind that progresses things and makes it, makes it better, right? Yeah. You know, I, like, this is the kind of, you know, this is not, I'm not saying what we are, or we're not working on. I'm more just saying, like, these are the conversations sure. that we have internally, right? I, yeah. I do, I do, now that you're putting it like this, I do wonder if it's like a framing issue, kind of going back to those psychological tricks or, or mm-hmm. what have you that games do all the time uh, to kind of fool us into doing things that we think we wouldn't like, but in reality, we kind of do. Um, 
So, like, for instance, like going back to SnowRunner or MudRunner, um, mm. you know, people like just a game about driving because it's, you know, that's literally the whole game. You are getting SnowRunner to drive a big truck and get stuck in the mud because, mm. you know, the mud looks cool, the truck looks big, and it, it feels awesome. In Foxhole, even if you did the exact same kind of gameplay, you know, copied and pasted as much as you, as you could of it over, um, people may not necessarily have that same frame because they're like, well, I want to fight in a war. Uh, but, you know, I didn't really sign up to be, you know, I didn't pay the $30 or whatever to, to, to get stuck in the mud here, but I kind of got to do it because my regiment needs to. But that's and, where, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. sorry, I didn't mean No, yeah, no, that, that was my point is that, yeah. you know, it's, it's just a framing thing where it doesn't quite oh, click. Oh, for, for sure. I think that it's important to recognize that there are, again, this can't be blanket because there's different of course. segments of players. Because there are players, I know, I've, I've talked to players. Me too. That... Oh that do it specifically for the Lodgy, like for the, there's even players, like we don't have this unfortunately anymore. Like the idea that, um, uh, you know, the, 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 there's players that before likes to just operate a crane, right? Mm -hmm. Or or there's players that just, just like to do it for it. And then the players that you're talking about, I understand it's a means to an end, right? I want to run my operation. I have to do a bunch of steps before I can do that. This is the war game. I want to play the war game, right? Mm -hmm. But Foxhole, you know, for better or worse, um, is has such a huge breadth that, like, I do, I do see players coming in having that frame, right? And and then maybe from that frame, you know, these things are more problem more problematic than someone with a different frame coming into it as I just. I do want to just operate cranes, move shipping crane containers around, drive trucks and, and stuff like that. Um, and, and that's, I think that's why, you know, that is literally one of the goals of the game. It's like, like players against all aspects of the war. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, I, I think it's important when we're talking about this, that, you know, we do account for different types of players. Right. So, wow. Yeah, I knew that would be a big one because it's such a philosophical one. So I don't mind spending some time on it. But mm -hmm. uh, moving on here, uh, recycling. Siege Camp wants to go green here. Has there been any thought given to better recycling slash reducing of items or just decluttering? So for instance, magazine recycling for loaded weapons. My cutler has a round in it, uh, but there's no threat. Okay, well, I'm going to put it back in the stockpile. Oops, I just wasted a whole rocket. Um, it, it, I guess this is more of a feature ask, sorry. But um, is there a way to maybe have it so that you recycle a fully loaded rifle uh, so that you can refund that clip or that or that magazine? Are you talking about uh, logistics players doing this? or? I, I guess it's more of a frontline thing, but it ties to logistics uh, because it's, you know, it's like wasting uh, items. Um... Recycling. I I think with regards to recycling, the area we refunding refunding might be a better word for it. Refunding. Okay. Let, let me like, put it like this: the refunding okay. or crating of containers and vehicles. So, um, there's that clip of oh my goodness, what's the name of the big streamer that we had? Uh, he's a pro gamer, but then he retired, and now he's like the biggest streamer. Uh, goodness. All right. Well, I forgot his name. Uh, but he <laughs> there's a clip of him. <laughs> He spends 20 minutes trying to uh, sneak, he's going commando, uh, into the enemy port, but he's literally navigating a graveyard of freighters. And uh, right. it's just him trying to move freighters out of the way so that he can actually do the thing he wants to do. But it's just right. this massive boneyard of freighters and, and uh, robo or, uh, motorboats. So like yeah, yeah. finding a way to declutter that or crate them or refund items. Same thing with trucks at the front line. Um, yeah, we, we, you know, uh, we had taken a look at the, at the stockpile um, sites for freighters for that exact issue. Uh -huh. um, and cause that's that is that's a problem, especially when we're when the expectation increased to use water lodgy. Um, people were just driving freighters to the front, and then we, you know, just as a side note, that did cause this whole other side side uh, side debate internally of hmm. like, okay, well, you know, people are just spamming freighters, leaving them to the front. Right. Maybe they need to cost more, and it's like, okay, well, if they make them cost more, it's gonna 
be like we're nerfing Logi, right? And it's like, okay, maybe we shouldn't do that. And it's like, and and uh, you know, I think I think I also want to mention that like sometimes when changes happen, like it, it you know, uh, around the time, like I, a lot of the feedback was like, okay, we were intentionally like trying to make Logi worse, right? <laughs> and I think a lot of times it's just like we're trying to fix problems, other problems. Right, we're trying to Im- improve other things behind the scenes, and it just happens that, like, you know, that may have impacted Logi in a way, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes we don't even foresee it, right? It just impacts Logi another way. And sometimes it's a bug, right, <laughs> that we didn't even want to do. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, like, that was sort of this this uh, with the freighters. Um, yeah, I mean. <laughs> I think when it comes to, okay, I think when it comes to just a few things there, because one is solving the clutter. That's one problem, right? Right. The other is some sort of idea of like recovering things and salvaging, I think, right? Mm-hmm. I think the former is um, more, you know, just some game, like some uh, almost like this weird, I'm going to call it an edge case, but it's this it's just this problem that has to be fixed, like like a lot of other problems. But in terms of the, you know, something like something we've talked about a lot is tanks leaving behind husks and you being able to bring that back, mm-hmm. right, and repurpose it or something. So I think that's like a cool feature. In terms of clearing out the clutter, yeah, I think you know it, it's it, with freighters. You know, I talked about that problem, and then trucks. Yeah, I mean, a recycling feature, I don't know, I, I'll, I'll be Refunded frank. Refunded into you know, like a fraction of the BMATs or something. It would, it, it's a kind, it's about kind of much, a lame, yeah. it's kind of a lame uh, solution. Another, uh, the really lame solution would be just, okay, it's been there for 30 minutes without any interaction. It just despawns. That's kind of lame. Right, right, uh, yeah. But, you know, does the, you know, does the solving the problem outweigh that? Who, that's maybe an opinion thing. Um, yeah, yeah. I haven't thought about that enough. Yeah, I don't know. Like, to be fair, war is a mess. It's it's a big old mess. And one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite things to do is kind of niche gameplay is literally just be a janitor at the front line. I will just prioritize weapons and like, hey, I'm grabbing the ammo for this. Oh, rocket! I'm gonna I'm gonna grab the 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 you know. This I don't cover. think that's that niche because there there there's people that are teeth that like playing that way, right? Like I've yeah. heard, I know that Julian enjoyed playing because at one time there was some um i don't remember the exact design decision but so oh. something that we had were considering doing that would reduce that role in the game right oh. um and julian was like well i think some people like enjoy they I enjoy that. that right like they want to help because they feel like they're helping their team the most by doing that rather than going to the front getting shot and dying and wasting things they feel like if i pick up a, pick up a bunch of things put it back in a stockpile, I, I'm actually contributing more to my team. It's right? uh, it's like Viscera Cleanup Duty. Uh, you know that game? Right. It's kind of no, like that. I haven't. Okay. I gotta look it up. Oh, uh, it's it's it's. I love the I love the framing of that game. It's hey, you know, in first person shooters, your character just screws up, just like messes up everyone, blood guts everywhere. Okay, what if yeah. that person leaves to go on to the next level, but your job is the janitor who cleans up the level. Like your job is to clean up the level. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, that's that, that's one of my favorite niche gameplay things, or maybe seemingly niche things that I like. like what's that game called? I'm Viscera Cleanup something. I forget. Actually, you know what's funny? Ever since I found Foxhole, I've actually not been interested in that game anymore because Viscera Cleanup... I mean, I, I, I very much appreciate it. It's, it's a good game, but... Um, you know, it's like in Visser cleanup doesn't matter. In Foxhole, though, you spend an hour cleaning up the front lines. That does matter because you're refunding resources. Oh yeah, it's all about yeah. framing, um, and that's why it's hard to break away from Foxhole sometimes. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, I guess it could. Uh, no, you know, we'll, we'll just move on from there. We did touch on organization before, which I know isn't directly tied to logistics, but a lot of people were, were definitely throwing out a few suggestions there within the frame of logistics, so why not? So um, a looking for group feature 
or a better way to entice people like, hey, uh, w there is a community of, of uh, truckers or a community of uh, scrappers that, you know, like getting together and doing stuff, but we just can't advertise without spamming world chat and getting downvoted into oblivion. So instead we have to like physically go around the, the home region and find people, uh, you know, for this task or that task. What if we just had like a, like a, like a listing of squad, I mean, there, there is, you do have like a squad listing, but it's for the region or like a listing of regiments uh, as well. Yeah. So like, for instance, there's no in-game listing of regiments. You have to go onto the discord or, you know, go onto social media and hope you find something cool, uh, which is a little unfair to the up and comers. So, you know, looking for ways to better advertise your task, your job, essentially the operation system. When are we going to get the operation system back in the game? <laughs> um... <laughs> yeah, technical probably problem. never. Yeah. Oh, never. That. Okay. Um, ne never yeah, because of uh, time. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I guess never say never. Um, right, right. But, but I think it, we would rather. It, it, is it technical or is it design? It's design. Like okay. we we well maybe somewhere between philosophical and, and design, but we'd rather expand on regiments and squads, which are the modern versions. Like. If we do arrive at something like operations, it wouldn't oh. be like bringing back that operation system. It, it would be like integrating doing something. into regiments or something, or integrating exactly into something okay. more modern, right? Um, modern in the context of like our tech and and how things are done now. Mm -hmm. um, it's first of all, I th I think the game probably does need a regiment, better uh, regiment discoverability, um, or like an in-game listing because right now it's. There's no listing. Yeah. Right? You just have to yeah. find, come across someone from X, X regiment and then hopefully, you know, like, oh, yeah, I want to join one, them. This one idea that we keep on coming back to all the time is, is, um, is some idea where on the map, like, you know, s squads are visible. Cause like you take something, you want to take something that's successful already in the game, right? Like something oh. like map posts. I think we can all agree, um, map posts are, are pretty useful, right? Mm -hmm. um, they could be improved, but they're pretty useful. So you take a look at something like that, and maybe that can be a good way to surface things. So an example might be like, okay, so right now we have red, uh, we have map posts, and you have squad map posts, and um, and regiment map posts. So you can sort of filter who gets to see it, right? But it'd sure. be kind of cool if there was like a like a squad advertising. Like if you could have one map post that th this is where our squad is, right? Mm -hmm. This is where we're stationed, and maybe you can even see it on like the deployment map. You're a new player, you come in, and you're like, hey, like this is the big, you know, there's a there's a Logi squad, and they're doing Logi out of this region, and they're doing all this amazing stuff with cranes and shipping containers, the building up ports and all this stuff, and you can read what they're doing. They're like, hey, we're about this. You go, like, okay, I'm gonna click on that, and you deploy to where they're operating, right? And then you can just ask them, maybe there's some UI or something that like automatically requests you to join. And then you, you, the ultimate dream there, and this is, this goes to the technological versus, technological limitation that stops what we want, right? right, right, right. The dream version of this that I've always wanted to see is that you're not deploying into a location in the world, you're deploying into a squad. Right, mm. that's what I've always wanted. Right, like picture all the deployment points are gone, and all you see are squad points that you join. Right. Okay. Um, um, but there's technical implication there because uh, if you like, because the regions are limited, that wouldn't, you know, that would be you would always be limited to you wouldn't we wouldn't right now. Reason why the game works is because we're pushing a lot of we're giving players a lot of information about the regions that. They can go to because there's space here, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of like players might be like, I just want to join a front. Um, you know, oh, these regions are not queued. I'm going to go there, and that works effectively in sort of reducing the queues on average. But if you're suddenly saying it's about squads, usually there's snowballing effects with these things where people want to join the most popular squads, right? Okay. So you might end up with a situation where the game is like not directing you to where there's room in the front front line or the world it's there for you to where there's the least amount of room mm -hmm. so but if there was if that limitation was gone suddenly right there was no borders i think that would be amazing because you look at a game like squad right mm -hmm. the magic of that game and why that game like one of the reasons why that game is so amazing 
is because from the get-go, you're not spawning at a spawn point. You're like, you choose your squad. That's where you go, right? right? Like, that's that's the whole game, right? It, it, it's all about being a squad, right? Right. And, and I think to some degree, like, if you could deploy into a regiment, right? I want to deploy to this Lodgy regiment squad or group or whatever, right? Um, and then they kind of herd you around. Isn't that the ultimate version of like what this sort of persistent war social structure is not how it should work? I mean, that'd be amazing, right? Yeah, that would be the ultimate looking for group feature. Uh, you don't Absolutely. have to type LFG, yeah. it's right there in the deployment menu. Uh, yeah. Now, of course, yeah. naturally, people are going to game that to hell. Where it's like, oh, okay, well, we have this literal, like, <laughs> squads are now just massive hive minds that's just spitting out troops even though we keep taking them out. No, they just keep dumping troops. Yeah. Like, I thought we killed all 20 of them. No, there's 50 more they just deployed in because, you know. Um, you know whatever. what, though? Yeah. There, you know, there could be an in-between in the future, too, right? Like, I think so. I don't think it's, you know, I think it could be the way it is now, but maybe on the deploy screen. Maybe alongside the deployment points, well, it could give you more information. Right? Whereas a philosophical one then uh, aspect is logis logistics isn't just items and materials. Logistics can also just be people, right? Uh, oh, oh, huge that'd be amazing. Pa huge yeah. part of World War II was just getting people into the fight. Driving people, taxiing people, that, the the bus, like hey, you're killing the bus industry. Frontline tours will go on strike if you if you implement that feature, Mark. Uh, so <laughs> the the ultimate. Okay, it's funny. Yeah, yeah. We're touching upon all these like the ultimate version of if there weren't technical of technological limitations, but that would be amazing. Is if you're a first time player, right, and you go in, and when you join, you you, you join at the back line, like inside like a training barracks or something right yeah and you literally have to be driven to the front and when you reach the front you start hearing all these explosions and everything and that's when you know you've kind of like reached the front <laughs> and 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 like you're saying if if they're if your manpower goes down at the front and you need to move more manpower that's a logistical problem in itself too right, right. yeah so Cool up, cool while we're talking about it, but will that just lead to hours of, <laughs> of people uh, sitting at the back line trying to set up just? I mean, I guess is that the game? Foxhole's the playground. I don't know, but um, fun to fun to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. There's a few more things involving organization here. So yes, I mentioned uh, in-game regiment listings and regiment management tools. Stop Foxhole uh, forcing players to download Discord. Although I do uh, encourage people to download Discord. It doesn't need to feel like a necessity. Has there been any thought given to providing space for larger organizations? So for instance, there's the, the Warden... High command. I've completely forgotten the name because uh, there's been so many iterations. It was the Warden Army, right. then the Warden. I think now it's the Warden Unity Hub, and then of course yep. Colonial Sigil, and then other groups um, that uh, focus around tech. Can there be space for that provided into the game? I don't know how you do it, uh, but considerations there. Um, I think in the foreseeable future, we're probably like in terms of grouping, grouping. Grouping primitives, I think uh, regiments is probably um, uh -huh. the largest form, and then sure. we're probably stopping there for now. So, yeah, yeah. I, think, I mean, I, I think, like, yeah. I, oh, I think people were more so uh, looking at the context of all those questions was more so. You know, it's like, you know, it feels like the decisions seem like out of the regular player's hands when all these, you know, big faction-wide decisions are being done out of the game as opposed to into the game. You know, what's happening in Discord DMs or, you know, forums as opposed to, right. um, you know, stuff happening in the game. But, you know, that's kind of, I guess that's always been kind of the case in MMOs. Um, so maybe you, can't, maybe you can't quite fight that. But just a consideration there. Ticket system for logistics requests? Circumventing the need to type in chat and being drowned out by the Fs? Um, you know, uh, or just, you know, uh, spending time on the, on the map posts. I know, I know map posts have been utilized in that way, but something specific for logistics, uh, mechanic for like, a, uh, I know I said, I already kind of mentioned job postings, but st something like that. Yeah, no, I, you know, I think map posts can probably 
again, pointing to something that works well already can be expanded on that. I think even something as, uh, you know, it could be simple or it could be more elaborate. And I think we could do it all, or I'd like to do it all at some point, um, given enough time, right? Of, you know, mm-hmm. uh, but I, I think it'd be amazing, you know, small things on a small thing side, just being able to like um, type in some sort of using like symbol so you don't have to like type everything out. Mm. Yeah. Um, so like if you like with, right click on a stockpile, instead of a text box, it'll be, okay, here's all the tabs for the main types of items like small arms, explosives, uh, utility items, etc. And then it's just like a, a tree of items. So like you click on the bullet, then the rifle, then the ammo. And then that just like, hey, uh, someone in- initiated a kind of a vote, not not a, you know, like a, a region wide vote or anything, but yeah, like a local yeah, vote yeah. of like, hey, yeah, I, this person wants ammo. It's like, oh, I also want ammo. Click, click, you know, stuff like that. So that's that okay there is a okay there is a philosophical debate there mm, right okay. because if it the map posts work well because someone's typing out a message that feels like a human typed mm. it out like you're interacting with a human right and okay. one thing that that we've always feared is that if it becomes too much of a ui if it becomes too much of hey someone's just hitting buttons at the front and then uh-huh. someone at the back looks at the buttons. It doesn't feel like you're collaborating with humans. It feels like you're just interacting with a UI, right? Uh-huh. Um, so it's like, I think I would want to provide more tools to get at that. Like, I, I get it. Like, it's clunky to put a map post up that's like, we need solar supplies. And then you have to, like, type that out a million times. And, and then the map post, like... I get it. There needs to be a better way or, or, or there should be a more streamlined way to do it. Um, but how do you stream like that without while still maintaining this feeling that, you know, uh, you're, you're, you're playing with humans, right? Right. As opposed to like working at an Amazon warehouse where it's like request on screen, do tasks. Exactly. And then, you know. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Hey, you know, hey, this is why you need a first party uh, siege camp made uh, VoIP system because how cool would it be if you were in the back line and then you connected to a factory and then like you could like radio into a, a town base up a, all the way in the three regions forwards like, hey, what do you need? I need, uh, and then someone talks back to you at the town base like, hey, we need this, this, and this. That way you're actually talking to the person. I don't know. Absolutely. Uh, the the, the yeah. more you, the more you talk about the limitations, the more I hear about the limitations of Vivox for all for all the good they've done in other games. Uh, I think Foxhole is far outpacing that. But yeah, so that I actually hadn't considered that angle before. So thanks for bringing that up. How much time do you have, Mark? I know we're uh, an hour and I fifteen. Think, uh, I think another like fifteen twenty minutes. Fifteen minutes. Good. All right. You know what? Let's go into speed round here a little bit. Flatbeds costing B mats instead of R mats. Uh, kind of. Biting down on that pain point. Uh, what's, what's the justification for the armats there? Um, the justification was that we didn't want people to just be shooting their... So it's already bad enough that people are like dumping trucks at the front, but mm. if it gets... If they're too undervalued, then people would just shoot them. Uh, people... Oh, just shoot the arm, shoot the flat to override the To override the need for uh, the, like the, the crane, right? You just shoot it and it drops down. Oh. Okay, uh, I, I I do wonder. Uh, so it's been brought up that the 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 flatbed is just so valuable now uh, for the people, particularly in the back line, who may not have that problem. That maybe you know maybe it's time to either well, cut down on the automatic requirement or you take a look at the you you take a look at the freighters. You were no. just complaining about the freighters earlier. No. <laughs> yeah, you see what I'm saying, right? And so. Um, we thought about it, but then we're like, okay, do we want to make that problem worse? And then is it going to be that that player you're trying to navigate around the freighters and we're just navigating around flatbed trucks and and then and then you can like game it. So it's it it's just we've thought about other things like um, maybe we just provide a whole bunch of them at the start of the war or something like that, right? Mm. Um, like maybe we just pre-stock a bunch of flatbed trucks and that can sort of overcome some but- of that. That's a stopgap measure in the beginning, I guess. For sure, it's not a long-term thing. Um, but oh, add, add a metal yeah. so that it's a specific return flatbeds metal. Uh, so if you if you if you return enough flatbeds, you get this metal. I don't know. Um, 
I guess moving on then, why did tripods get flipped to R mats instead of B mats? Too much spam? Oh, that's not a logistics question, man. You lied. <laughs> I, it, well, people asked it, and it's kind of related to logistics because it's R mats. Uh, people, a lot of people didn't yeah. read the po post, but I'll ask it anyway. I'm just, yeah, I'm just joking. Uh, no, but uh, so yeah, I, I we had talked about this. I'm not the closest to that part of the bouncing, but um, I was the. There was a lot of. There definitely they were overused. Right, because oh. I think we overswung a bit with the with the tripods. Because um, okay. we had this issue before where we we were um, trying to get people to adopt tripods. So we're like, this is this goes back a, a little further back, right? Like from the beginning of tripods, right? Uh -huh. um, where we were like, okay, how do we get people to actually carry this thing? It's it's kind of hard to do, right? Uh -huh. Um, and, and then like, it, like when you hold, yeah, so when you hold a large item, you're vulnerable and all this stuff. So we're like, let's try to make it widely adoptable. So we made it cheap. And, um, and the interesting thing is that, and then they were like, they were used a lot, but they weren't overused like they were after update, uh, 46. Right. Mm. But the one thing that happened after update 46, which was not, which we didn't expect is that their adoption went up a lot. And I know it's partially because, um, you know, there's different reasons for this. So this isn't the only reason, but one reason was because the interface improved so much. Remember <laughs> or you couldn't leave the ammo with the weapon. Right. Right. And also the, um, uh, the, like, uh, uh, what was it? They were annoying to use because if you hit the wrong button, yep, the, the, the V button, yep. <laughs> right. So we improved the interface a lot, and I think by improving the interface, that was one of several reasons why adoption went up. And adoption went up a lot. And if you remember, a lot of the um, complaints early on was that they were, um, they were, there was too much machine gun. Uh, tripod spam. spam. There was yeah. too much tripod spam in general. So, um, yeah, I think I think reducing the spam is definitely one of the reasons, right? So, even larger slash higher capacity shipping containers is that just a simple scaling thing, or we see that on the horizon? Uh, it's just a simple numbers game on that one. Uh, I think, well, I think people have noted the large shipping containers on in the home region uh, as a long time tease. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, like I said, we literally increase the shipping container by 50%. Right. right. <laughs> I don't know why that never gets mentioned, but um, we literally increased it by 50%. It was in the notes. Was it in the patch notes? Oh, yeah. It was in the patch notes, oh, yeah, right? Okay. Um, it was an update 46. So if you joined after update 46, the 60 slots would be your standard, right? Sure. So um, I understand certainly why, why those questions would be asked then. But, oh. um, you know, I, I don't think... I don't think the solution is just simply to make things like more, like, you know, like more right? Because Bigger. at the end of the day, that's we all know like more is not more fun, right? Mm -hmm. It's just gonna you're sort of just moving the problem along to like another day, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think the I think it's more interesting to make it more fun and pr providing other ways to um, instead of the answer of reducing transport by just increasing numbers. I, I, I would like to find other ways to optimize optimize transport, right? Is the, So right now, uh, moving, I guess this is good. we're getting farther away from logistics, but a refre refresh button for reservations on person as opposed to having to go to the structure and click the button there. Instead, you can log in and uh, like pull up your menu and it's like, here's all your reservations. And then you just click the, that menu and then <laughs> got it. Nope, too simple, too easy. Defeats the purpose. Yeah, I mean, I don't like, I was just, you know, it's, it, it's unrelated, but I was just having this philosophical discussion about yeah. user experience. Um, and we always want to make things as tactile as possible and mm. like um, just sort of providing it. If you just sort of have this UI where you can control everything. You sort of remove the player from out of the world. Like it doesn't right. even matter where I go anymore. I just sort of like the more and more you do that, the more and more it just becomes like I'm just hitting buttons on this screen. 
right? And it doesn't log matter. Log in, log, in, log yeah. out. Simple as that. Also, I'm not playing the game anymore. <laughs> right. It's like, you know, but, but you know, I'm not, like, if, if players are dealing with that problem more and more, it's a sign that there is an issue, right? It, 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 if the complaint is there, it's not to be ignored. It, it should be looked at, um, which is why in this update, like before you had to do this song and dance of submitting something to the stockpile in right. order to refresh. But now we just have one button that you click. So it's almost like just the button on the screen, but because mm. now you just hit this button, it refreshes all of your stockpiles he, at that right. storage depot, right? So. Right. Here, here's a possible workaround: is access codes for uh, reservations similar to the access codes used for warehouses? So instead of tying it to squads or regiments or what have you, or to a single person, instead you can just share the code with whomever. Um, you can Discord message someone like, "Hey, I, you go in. I can't, but you go in and reserve it. Here's the access code." Similar to how some people will post the access code to warehouses. Um, like in, on a sign, it's like, hey, I don't care. Take it. Here's the access code, and you share it amongst yourselves. Uh, or you know, I talking about for storage depot, like or no? Yeah, so, You're so you know the hard. access code for storage depots, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, applying that to uh, reservations for uh, bunkers and uh, on uh, trenches. Yeah, we thought. Oh yeah. We thought at some point about just using access codes for everything. Mm -hmm. And that to be the because th th that's the advantage of access code. It's it's more of a sandbox tool. Like it's up to the players to figure out how to how to group it. Like do I share it with my squad? Then they can share it with their whole regiment, right? And then there right. you go, right? Um, and but you know, I, that's a philosophical discussion. Like maybe maybe it should be like that. I think that what we did in this update is we were trying to. Um, at least take uh, what we had with squads and and try to you know unify the interface a bit across different things that you could reserve. Um, but you know we we thought about doing that for the uh, reserve stockpiles, but you know reserve stockpiles are such a big part of the game that we just felt let's just leave that alone for now. It's working um, for the most part. At a functional level, so I don't know. It's a it, it's a good it's a good philosophical question. Yeah, it just sounds like with all these you know uh, on the fence decisions, people just need to make more unions, make more advocacy groups, uh, <laughs> bring more strike. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but I don't I mean maybe that's that is a valid option, but I don't I don't know how far you'll get with a, <laughs> with a um, with a, a bunker reservations union. Uh, I guess you can go on straight. I don't know. Anyway, um, weather uh, related to log logistics because trucks drive in weather. But anyway, weather. Can you restate how weather events are deployed? Uh, one and then two. What factors on where to deploy them are calculated? How are they calculated? Um, so okay. So our goal with weather is that we don't want it to feel like we don't want it. We want it to feel like a natural thing. We don't want it to feel like a game mechanic that, you know, people are trying to min-max, right? Um, so from that standpoint, the way we do it, I'm not going to talk about, like, the exact way that we do it. Um, I'll say this. We don't go in there and <laughs> start events, despite what people think. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. I, I think that was the big one people were asking. That's, like, the heart of the question. Is So uh, let me say that. Is can uh, I guess you always can, but is the normal mode of operation that you pre-establish the weather events like on day three hundred, hell or high water? It's pre-programmed at day three hundred to start a blizzard. Um, uh, it, it, like there's no there's like no chance for the developers to go in and start. It's not like you're sitting there going, um, we're going to start a uh, rainstorm now. Um, no, no. The no. you know the colonials are doing do so yeah. good. Let's screw up their day by d doing a storm here. No, 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 that. no, no. Absolutely not. No. We if that happened, that. if if it looks like that, it's pure coincidence. <laughs> Hundred percent. Okay. We don't. Weather for us is like we don't want it to. Again, like we just want it to feel 
like it it kind of happens it's sort of um most of the time it's ambient and then sometimes it's more intense and we you know like we don't do that because we intentionally want it to feel like um if we want it to feel natural like we want you know like we want to feel as as unpredictable as like the real weather is right mm -hmm. um and you know so it's a black box from that regard i don't want to i'm not going to talk about how how, sure. how yeah. um you know the exact like scheduling and all that stuff um but, but the devs do not interfere with it uh they don't <laughs> oh, based on real world based on how the game is going no 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 okay. I mean, it was implied, but I think people just needed to hear that. I think people just need to hear that and hear it confirmed. Like, um, like you know, like, don't get me wrong. There is, like, the way we do it, we, we ultimately designed the system. So there sure. is intention be, be behind, like, you know, how it's supposed to work. But we don't interfere with it. Okay, let me let me just say this, right? And and maybe I'm giving away too much of the black box. I don't okay. know, right? But, but, like, but, like, we don't. Once a war starts, we we don't interfere with weather. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I, I honestly I think that pretty much put oh well, I don't the, know how people will take that but the I, only I, that time down, we, yeah the only time we would is if there was a bug and it was like oh my god this is like a bug and we got to fix the bug okay. and by fixing the bug we had to like you know fix Restart some part of weather or something. Or something. Or, yeah, exactly. Or like the scheduled like blizzard, or not the scheduled, but you know, the pre programmed yeah, exactly. blizzard uh, needed to. Okay, sure. Um, yeah. I, okay, then I guess going off of that, in terms of make, you know, meteorology was a big part of World War II uh, in, the, in the background. So, um, ways to partially read or predict the weather, add a metagame to, not a metagame, but like a game gameplay aspect to that. That'd be amazing. Not, not totally say, okay, here's the structure, you now know exactly how the weather's going to go but yeah. piece it together collaborate stuff like that that'd be cool yeah i think i think we wanted to add a bunker weather station you know how we have like the observation bunkers uh, the, right. the yes right we want to add like a like a weather uh, i was i thought that was going to happen i was waiting for that to pop up on the slide yeah. when you announced that but sadly uh, not quite not quite soon yeah enough. but that's all right um but we'll uh, see yeah and other weather events like uh, uh, heat waves, fog, high winds, you know, there's always the room for more, right? Nothing, think nothing's off the table. Well, I think when, when, um, I think in the future, you know, if you think about all the content we can add to the game, I think weather, uh, we, we want to get weather in early so that as we, you know, go back to visit other parts of the game, um, like potentially taking a look at naval at some point or other areas, mm -hmm. like weather, we want weather to be there from the beginning because they because they can greatly impact all these other things, right? So, oh, yeah. All right, tornadoes confirmed. Then uh, <laughs> the current array of raw resources have still been described as too few, resulting in the bottlenecking of production and stunted strategic depth. Has there been any thought given to providing more types of raw resources to relieve the strain on the BMAT? So, for instance, by uh, instead of concrete being uh, tied to, um, oh my goodness, uh, uh, geez, come on, uh, that resource, instead it has its own individual resource. That way it can be specialized, uh, it can be focused on, it can relieve uh, stress on all the other ones. Another one is maybe... Um, uh, I, I mentioned small arms production, wood, lumber, uh, stuff like that. That way, it instead of BMATs being tied to everything, you could specialize. And then also you can use that to uh, provide extra depth to uh, strategy. So it's like, hey, all the tungsten is over here. Um, so, or like, you know, it's, it's in these regions. Uh, if we focus on that, it'll be harder, not impossible, but harder for... Uh, the opposing force to create all the things to uh, make yeah. all the things you know that are tied to tungsten, which is reflective of what happened in the real war. Uh, with, with you know in in, in real wars, uh, you know, any thought of that? Yeah, I think the I think that conceptually is exciting, um, just but, like 
hurting players through logistics, <laughs> like <laughs> having pair of players themselves as part of logistics. But it's 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 one of those things that we tried before, and um, in, in terms of having strategically located resources, and maybe we didn't try hard enough, but it definitely had a snowballing problem. First of all, if one side, as soon as they took those regions, the other side would just completely give up, right? No point in playing, right? Mm. Um, so the, the idea of these like strategic resources sounds cool, but I think if we were to do that again, it would have to be something that is not essential, right? It, it maybe it benefits right. you, but again, it goes back to that problem. Is like if it that bouncing problem of it's either not valuable enough. If it's not valuable enough, is it have that strategic feeling? Would it be worth trying to go for that as an objective? If it is worth it, then you're going to be snowballing, and you basically you win the war when you claim the resource, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, I think that would be cool. I mean, I think more more resources and somehow tying it strategically um, into the game would would be would be exciting. Um, and I'd like to try that again with the lessons we've learned. I think that'd be good. And I think there's another question there about decoupling of resources. Um, and you're mentioning like different items for different things and too many things using the same resources. I, I guess if we were to do that, it would actually have to be, um, because you're either just saying, okay, we're just going to provide more resources, right? That's another way of just saying we're just going to multiply the amount of resources in the world, right? Because if you say, okay, I'm going to add wood, and now wood's needed for mm -hmm. make all this other stuff, you're basically saying, okay, I'm going to add twice the amount of resources, right? And now there's just more. So it's like, why not just make twice the amount of like B mats then, right? Except that if it was twice the amount of B mats, it would just, it would just be easier. Because then it'll be annoying. Why do I have to get wood? Now I have to drive to two places instead of one in order to mm -hmm. in order to do my logi run, right? So we'd have to contend with that. So it's like, I think it's it's a bit of a design a design problem, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Have, it, it depends on how you view it and how it'd be implemented. But it's like yeah. some people yeah. would see that as a total nightmare. It's like Jesus Christ, really? Wood, limestone, uh, mm. rubber? You're gonna throw all this at me? Other people would see that, uh, might see that as, uh, you know, like more depth, more specialization. It's like, hey, we're going to be the the chromium crew. We're going to focus right, right. all our efforts on chromium. Shout out to the Asagi Oil uh, Company, who are like their whole shtick is literally just fuel. They mm -hmm. just, they drop tankers everywhere and they fuel uh, things for people. Um, I, I love stuff like that. Um, and you know maybe there might be more of a, a breeding ground for that if you if you added more resources. But uh, I can see where people would definitely oh, might want to run away from that. So in any case, I want to thank Mark uh, for again taking time again uh, off the clock to uh, answer these community questions. I want to thank the community for allowing me to completely misrepresent their questions <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and. Uh, I uh, really get into the heart of why, <laughs> of why, um, uh, why flare guns aren't into uh, in in the game quite yet. But uh, no, um, this is this has been a good one. I actually really enjoyed this one. I enjoy, I enjoy all of them, but I'm always scared of maybe not getting uh, to the heart of the questions. But I think we d delved into into some good topics. So, Mark, thank you so so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me again for sure, uh, to the next one. Uh, for The Press Corps, I'm Jeffrey Juddings. Good night and good fight. The Press Corps is a non-profit creative collective of artists, reporters, and players from the MMO video game Foxhole by Siege Camp. Our mission is to engross our audience in and amplify the stories of this unique war ecosystem. The Press Corps was founded in early 2018 by former Planetside 2 Radio Free Araxis host, Captain in Arms. It is a separate community entity and is in no way representative of Siege Camp. For more information, visit the Press Corps Discord through the link below.